Have you heard of the case of a 12 year old boy who died within 24 hours of arriving at a therapeutic wilderness camp, a camp for troubled youth? Well, if you haven't heard about it, then don't worry, I'm going to fill you in right now. If you have, then I hope you've checked out my live stream where we did a deep dive on this case. We looked at this entire presentation. We also looked at the probable cause affidavit and documents. We looked at video clips, survivor stories, everything. So much so that it took about two hours to work through all that information. And I would recommend checking it out. But I know that not everyone has two hours to go through a live stream, even though there's timestamps. OK, so this is an abbreviated version of that live stream where we're not going to go over documents. We're not going to look at video clips or anything like that. I'm going to link that episode for you if you want to check it out after this. This is just to get the story out because I hope that more people will come forward, especially to the police. I mean, I've received a number of emails from people who have survived this camp, specifically this camp, which is now shut down, by the way. And they're just coming out saying, well, we tried to warn people. We were trying to, you know, people were trying to express themselves on forums, on Facebook. They were trying to alert the police. They were trying to tell even their parents that there were kids sent here. And for years, this Trails Carolina camp was being investigated. But unfortunately now, a 12 year old boy died and now the license has been pulled. You know what I mean? It's just so sad. So also in this episode, I'm not going to name the 12 year old boy. His parents have asked for him, his name not to be publicized. And so I'm going to respect their wishes for the sake of his siblings. Right. One might think, well, obviously if his parents sent him there, maybe they don't want their name in the media either, which I understand, but to protect his younger siblings, I'm rather not going to put his name um, out there. So Trails Carolina, let's get into this. If you're brand new here, my name is Gisela Kay. I am South African living in Switzerland, and this is Grizzly True Crime. I hope that you'll consider subscribing and becoming part of this fantastic community. Okay, so Trails Carolina is or was in North Carolina in this Lake Toxaway area. They describe it as a residential therapeutic camp for children and adolescents who have mental illness, developmental disabilities, or substance use disorders. Trails Carolina uses a variety of wilderness therapy programs. And when you hear from survivors, and there's hundreds of stories. And let me quickly show you this. There's this website called unsilenced.org, okay? And they say uh, the voice of youth rights. I'm going to link this for you. And if you go and specifically browse around there for the Trails Carolina survivor stories, there's so many documents. I mean, good luck wading through all of that. There's so many survivor stories. It's actually unbelievable. So Trails Carolina uses a variety of wilderness therapy programs targeted toward at-risk youth and those suffering from mental, behavioral, or substance abuse issues. Trails Carolina offers programs for boys and girls aged 10 to 17. If there's one good story out there, please send it to me. If somebody, if one of you or someone you know is watching this and you've been there and you have a positive story to share, just for the sake of hearing from the other side, email me. GrizzlyTrueCrime at gmail.com is my email address. I'd love to hear if there's even one good story because I haven't seen any. I've seen horror stories about this place. It's actually unbelievable that they were allowed to operate for so long. So as a backstory, this is not the first death to occur at the camp with a 12 year old boy. In 2014, on November 10th, a 17 year old boy named Alec Sanford Lansing ran away from Trails Carolina and then he fell out of a tree where he was hiding because he was trying to hide from the staff because he was freaking out at the camp, didn't want to be there. And so he climbed into a tree and unfortunately he fell. He broke his hip and he was lying in the creek. There was no help. You know, searchers weren't out there looking for him. In fact, it took about five hours for searchers to even start from the camp looking for him, even though one of the counselors saw him leave the group and walk away and then start running, right? Okay, and it took 12 to 24 hours to even call the police. One would think if you're running a camp and you're responsible for children, if you literally see one walking off away from the group, you might go after them or you might alert somebody, right? 
Anyway, so the temperatures between November 10th and 12th uh, of 2014 were between 40 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius. And Alex's body was in the water where it cools 25 times faster than in open air. So he died in that creek. It's just horrendous to think that he was lying there in that water, freezing to death with a broken hip. That is, that is terrible. So like total neglect, right? Um, so the, yeah, the camp staff waited long to even call the police to even start searching. And it took 18 days to locate his body, even though it wasn't that far from camp, which is also interesting. Two boys had run away just two months before Alec had, and they were aged 15 and 16, and they were found and arrested for breaking into unoccupied homes and stealing firearms and other items. Now, while one can't just break into unoccupied homes and steal things, the bigger question is, why did they feel the need to do that? To literally run away, break into unoccupied homes, and arm themselves. That's how threatened they felt at this camp. Isn't that alarming? Over the years, there have been many allegations about abuse at the camp. And there's been many ongoing investigations. And right now, there's a homicide investigation happening there because of this little boy who died. On February 3rd of 2024, a 12-year-old boy was found deceased where he was sent to sleep, less than 24 hours from arrival at the camp. Local DSS staff were on site the following day, but Trails Carolina prevented access to the camp's children until February 6th. So they wanted to come and take the other kids away to keep them safe because they didn't know what the hell happened here. But instead, Trails Carolina sent their kids that were in the same like uh, cabin, sleeping area as this little boy. They sent those kids to another location and wouldn't let the police talk to them. <laughs> Isn't that a red flag? Oh my goodness. So a search warrant was served at Trails Carolina on February 6th of 2024 by the Transylvania County Sheriff's Office. CJH, those are his initials, the little boy who died. His death has just been, and I mean June of, we're now in July, but in June of 2024, his death was officially ruled a homicide. So it took months to complete his autopsy toxicology report to do everything and finally determine, oh my word, this was homicide. That was very shocking because I've been following this case since February. I only reported on it recently, but I was wondering, like, what's going to happen? Are they going to say it's accidental or, you know, do that whole undetermined thing or no, 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 no. The medical examiner was like, this is a homicide. And they said it's homicide by asphyxia due to smothering. And we're going to get into how that happened. Note, since his death, the camp is permanently closed and has lost its license to operate. They lost their license in May of 2024, so it took a little bit of time. But thankfully, they can't operate anymore. The problem is, though, that they have other locations. That's what I'm worried about. So what happened between February 3rd of 2024, when the little boy died, and May, when their license was pulled? Well, they had some bullet points, some you know rules of conduct to follow, like not allowing any kid to sleep in a bivy. We're going to get into what a bivy is and what happened, and all sorts of rules that they made at the camp just to you know, be very safe while investigating. The Department of Health and Human Services determined that the organization failed to provide protection from harm, abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Other violations reportedly include the use of um, strip searches. Uh, okay, they would literally make new kids arriving there, as in, you know, they said between the age of 10 and 17. So can you imagine a 10 year old arriving? And they're like, okay, welcome. Take off all your clothes and squat and cough. Literally, these are the horror stories that are being shared out there, that they were made to squat and cough as if they've just arrived in prison with other less than qualified people handling this and, and watching. Oh man, I find that so sickening. Okay, so the use of strip searches, uh, issues with medication, uh, disbursement, and improper training for staff on the use of restraints. I'd love to know the average age of, you know, the staff there. Because it sounds like, you know, and what were the qualifications? It sounds like they were all youngish and not very qualified. His parents sent him to the camp due to, this is CJH, right? Due to behavioral issues. The cost of this camp is between $10,000 and $30,000 per month. Okay. Uh, and the kids usually stay for, I'm sure they would recommend, you know, an approximate three months, three to four months. 
He struggled with ADHD, anxiety, migraines, and had a hard time making friends. His parents paid for two strangers to escort him from his home in New York to Trails, Carolina. I don't know if you guys have seen, there's a documentary that Paris Hilton did, and she recently also spoke out about camps just like this, and how she was also actually a victim of this, where two strangers arrived at the house and plucked her out of bed, and basically it feels like being kidnapped, you know, and the kids don't understand, and they're like screaming their head off, it's deeply traumatic, and then they look at their parents like, help me, and the parents are just there like, because they organized it. I don't know, if someone's struggling with their mental health, you know, anxiety or depression, I don't know, they're saying ADHD, migraines, hard time making friends, all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't think any of these, like, tough love type strategies are going to help. Like, being kidnapped from your home and being, like, put in a camp where then, unfortunately, lots more abuse happened in these types of camps. That sounds deeply troubling, very scary, even more traumatizing. I think it would only make the mental health problems worse, right, in my opinion. February 3rd of 2024. On February 3rd of 2024, Detective Sergeant Andrew Shook and Detective Stoney Gons responded to Trails Carolina, located at 500 Winding Gap Road, Lake Toxaway, North Carolina, in reference to a deceased 12-year-old juvenile male. Members of the Lake Toxaway Fire Department were first on scene and requested law enforcement to the scene. Trails Carolina is a camp for troubled youth to attend. Detective Shook and Gons arrived at the location and began to process the scene. The juvenile, who will not be named in the search warrant, that's CJH, right, will be referred to as CJH. His body was laying in what is referred to as a bunkhouse, which is the sleeping quarters for the juvenile campers. It's a square structure that appears to be made out of wood. The front entrance is covered by a porch. Okay, but it gets worse. Unfortunately, it gets worse. Upon entering the structure, they observed CJH laying on the floor of the bunkhouse on a mat. The body was in rigor mortis at the time and was cold to the touch. CJH was laying on his back with his arms on his chest and his knees bent upwards towards the sky. He was wearing a red hoodie as well as a blue shirt underneath. He also had a CPR mask covering his face. CJH is a white male with brown hair. He was not wearing any pants or underwear. CJ's CJH's pants and underwear were laying next to his right shoulder. During interviews, camp counselors were asked how his pants got into this position, and they did not know. Now, what's interesting is his dad says, but he always, like, that was a thing. Now, he was sleeping in the nude at home recently. But what many people have said in the comments of that live stream is, why would a 12-year-old who's just been, like, kidnapped, I'm saying that in air quotes if you're just listening, taken from his home by these two strangers and he's put in the camp, why would he feel comfortable enough to sleep without his pants on on the first night when he's clearly not feeling very comfortable? That is a huge red flag. This no pants thing is a huge red flag still. As much as his dad might say, no, that's normal, that's what he did. As much as they say, you know, tags of clothing were irritating him, things like that, I understand. But like, wow, like given the situation, and wait till you hear more here, it's very unlikely that he himself was like, you know what, I'm going to sleep without my pants on tonight. If it happened, it happened. But I just worry about this case. And you'll find out why in a moment, right? So CJH had lividity settled into his back when he was examined by Detective Shook and Gons. They also noted possible petechial located in the lips and possible eyes. They noted, uh, so it could be signs of strangulation or something, or, you know, they're going to say smothering, asphyxiation, all of that. Okay, so they took, they noted an, an extended vein on his neck and possible bruising around the eye. Once they rolled the body, CJH began to foam at the mouth, which could have indicated that he ingested some sort of poison. Um, that's all... Very interesting, right, if you take it all into account. Um, So on the right-hand side, it says deputies responded at approximately 8.10 a.m. on February 3rd of 2024. Okay? Medical examiner Anthony Messer was requested to the scene to examine the body. He determined that it would be a medical examiner's case and to transport the body to the morgue so that it can be taken for autopsy. There were more examinations done with CJH at the morgue, which was documented by Anthony Messer as well as Detective Gonson Shook. Detective Shook interviewed Jackson Riley Hunt at the Transylvania County Sheriff's Office located at 153 Public Safety Way, obviously in North Carolina. J. 
During this interview, it was revealed that Mr. Hunt is one of the counselors for the camp. He explained to Detective Shook that CJH had been at Trails Carolina for less than 24 hours. CJH had refused to eat dinner at the camp when he was brought in. It was described that he was loud and irate when he first arrived at the camp. That's what I'm saying. And then he's suddenly going to be all comfortable later and take his pants off? Okay, Mr. Hunt said that he had calmed down later in the evening and ate some of the snacks that they provide. Also, I'm saying that's a red flag even based just on all the survivor stories. There's many stories of teens being SA'd at these types of camps, and particularly this camp. Mr. Hunt then explained CJH's sleeping arrangements. He described that CJH would have to sleep on the floor of the bunkhouse. The, bla- the base layer of it is a heavy-duty plastic that is cut approximately six feet and tied on each end with a string. On top of this is a sleeping bivy, that's what you can see on the right-hand side, which is considered a small tent. One side is collapsed and the other side is held up by a flex pole. Inside of this bivy is where the sleeping bag is placed, and CJH would have to sleep like this on the first night per protocol of Trails Carolina. This whole per protocol thing with this bivy is a huge concern. On the zipper of the bivy is a small alarm apparatus that is triggered to go off any time someone tries to exit the bivy. So it's literally now like a little coffin. You know what I mean? Like they're not allowed to escape. Alarms are triggered and just wait, wait, it gets worse. This device was covered by green tape and was seized along with the other items that CJH was sleeping in. Mr. Hunt described how at approximately midnight, right, 12 to 12.30 a.m., CJH began to experience a panic attack. Him and another counselor stood along the wall while CJH was experiencing panic and high anxiety. Mr. Hunt did not Uh, mention if he or other counselors attempted to assist CJH with any easement during his anxiety attack. But I thought it's a therapeutic wilderness camp. So you're just going to stand against the wall while this kid is having a panic attack? Mr. Hunt also mentioned that CJH could exit the bivy at any time. That's a lie. Uh, But when he described any interaction with CJH, he kept stating we would open or close the bivy. Mr. Hunt also explained that CJH was checked on at 12 a.m., 3 a.m., and 6 a.m., and he was found dead at 7.45 a.m., and he was cold to the touch and stiff, which tells you that these people know nothing about true crime, you know, autopsies, how people die, all of that. Why? Because he was cold to the touch and already in rigor mortis, which takes hours, right? So if they're like, no, he was checked out at 12, 3, and 6. No, not in less than two hours is he called to the touch and in rigor mortis. Detective Gons and Shook attempted to gain information on the other four juveniles that were in the bunkhouse along with CJH when he died. Trails Carolina staff refused to allow us to speak with any juveniles on site, as well as see them. They also refused to give out any of the juveniles' names or dates of birth or any other information as well. Transylvania County Department of Social Services attempted to check on the welfare of the children as well and were met with the same refusal by any and all Trails Carolina staff. DSS was provided with first names of juveniles but nothing else. When they attempted to ascertain the whereabouts of these juveniles, they refused to disclose the locations of them. Trails Carolina has multiple locations throughout the USA. Other known locations at this time are... 816 Sundance Lake Road. So I'm thinking if their license was pulled for one, it's probably the whole company's license. I hope so, that they're not operating other camps. They have another location in South Carolina as well. So the bivy was torn along the inner mesh panel. Staff at Trails Carolina defied protocol and secured the 12-year-old into the bivy using the weather-resistant door panel instead, which is not made from a breathable material. So it's like plastic. You know, if there's like mesh and then that all-weather like plastic, the mesh was torn. So they literally closed him in there, zipped up that plastic, which is non-breathable. Around 11 p.m., the autopsy notes the boy was let out of the bivy after he was seen moving around and making noise. He was permitted to sleep outside of the bivy, but was soon placed back inside, which was protocol. As they keep telling us about the protocol, he was seen moving one to two hours after being put back inside the secured bivy, but stopped moving shortly after, around 1 a.m. That would make sense of when he died. Counselors overseeing him could not check on him because of the bivy's opaque outer panel 
preventing them from potentially noticing a problem and helping him before it was too late. So them saying they checked on him at midnight, 3 and 6 a.m., how? <laughs> if they literally couldn't check on him. He had mild bruising on his legs and swelling of the brain. The autopsy report said that there were no signs of trauma or SA. He was found without pants, but his father told investigators that his son frequently slept that way. There was also no evidence of a drug overdose or any natural causes that could have led to his death. The autopsy noted the absence of three clonidine tablets, which is an anti-hypertensive drug that lowers blood pressure and heart rate by relaxing the arteries and increasing the blood supply to the heart, which is sometimes, according to everyone saying in the comments that they are on this medication, also used for ADHD. So thank you to everyone who shared those comments to fill us in on what this medication may be used for. The asphyxia finding was a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning all other reasonable causes of death were ruled out. The boy was placed into this compromised sleeping position by others and did not have the ability to reasonably remove himself, the report said. With this combination of factors, the death is best certified as a homicide, the autopsy report said. So... Who is getting cuffed and when? <laughs> I foresee future arrests. They will have to be, someone's going to be have to be held accountable. I'm sure they're doing the investigation, figuring out, figuring out exactly who's of the closed, who made the protocol, all of that, right? So it should be noted that a common warning on commercially available bevy products indicates that the outer weather-resistant opening should not be fully secured as it may lead to condensation and breathing restriction. The information was obtained on a basic web search. The Transylvania County Sheriff's Office is continuing its investigation. Literally, right now as we speak, they are continuing their investigation into this homicide. We are the, Now the spokesperson for Trails Carolina said, We are shattered by the tragic loss of a young life, and our deepest sympathies are with the student's family and loved ones. A little too late to apologize, don't you think? You know what I mean? Our priority is to acknowledge and respect the unfathomable impact on their lives and maintain the integrity of the investigation into the cause. But the sheriff's department said that Trails Carolina was really not cooperating. So I'm going to just move on from this because, again, I don't want to keep you here too long, okay? This is a, one of the survivor stories. She posted this on Instagram, okay? So if you want to read this, pause the video, read through it, and then press play again, okay? I want to make sure that I make this video as concise as possible for you so you get all the information in minimal time. So what now? The Transylvania County Sheriff's Office, which has been conducting a criminal investigation into the boy's death, said it is reviewing the autopsy report and will discuss it with the local district attorney. While no arrests have been made yet, investigators do have suspects. And they said suspects, not a suspect. They've got suspects. Detective John C. Nicholson told the media. So, I'll report back when there's arrest because I'm sure there will be, right? Okay, so that's everything that we went over in the presentation. Again, if you want to see more documents, a deep dive into that, video clips that we looked at, everything is timestamped for you, right? If you want to see resources, like we went over this a little bit uh, longer than what I showed you now, like this Unsilence the Voice of Youth Rights and all of those types of things, map time and everything, that you can see on the live stream that I linked below for you. So if you don't know what timestamps are, if you look at the comment section, the top comment, I always pin it, it's a comment I make, which is all the, the chapters of the video. So you can literally just click on those numbers and skip to the part that you wanna hear about or see or whatever it is. So if you say, you know what, I wanna see those video clips or hear those survivor stories, just click on that in the timestamps. But I just wanted to bring you this. Please share it so that more people can learn about this. It's absolutely horrifying. And I hope that if there's more camps like this, that people will feel encouraged to come forward to their local police, to their parents. If you want to email me, um, I keep all my sources anonymous. My email is grizzlytruecrime at gmail.com. Please know I'm just a content creator. There's nothing I can do except listen to your story. I can hear you out. I can empathize with you, but you need to contact the police. You need to tell your parents if you've been through this. If you feel like, look, man, it's time I speak up. If you feel like, look, man, it's time I, I speak out about this. Because there's so many children being abused in camps like this under the pretense of like a, a wilderness therapy program or like a camp for troubled teens. You know what I mean? And then what do they do? Well, it sounds like boot camp style, 
prison style type of training again in air quotes because how are they qualified to do any of that okay so that's it for now thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one stay safe <laughs>